Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is well. Before we get into it, make sure if you're enjoying the content, you go down and smash a like on the video. We're going to be dissecting a report coming out from Charlie Eccleshare, the football correspondent from The Athletic. Now, I can't bring this up on the screen. Um, unfortunately, um, I believe you have to pay for this report. So I'm going to go through it. Um, there's going to be a lot of reading, so it's probably going to be a bit of a longer video, but we are going to go through everything he says. Um, so let's get straight into it. So he says, when Ange Postacoglu took over as Tottenham manager um, this summer, we were told again and again and again that he would not com compromise whatever the situation. He would continue to play and play and play in the same way. He doesn't see any other way of playing. At times on Monday, it felt as though the game against Chelsea was designed to test Postacoglu's idealism. Now, before we get into the rest of the report, a lot of this is dividing a lot of debate. Some people are coming out and defending Ange. Some people are on um, on the side that you should have he should have parked the bus. We should have played for the point. I'm very much down the middle at the moment. I was yesterday very much on the side of park the bus and play for a point. But in so, we had chances when we went down to nine men. If Dyer stays on side, we get a second goal. If Son tests the keeper a bit more, we get a second goal. Um, but we lost 4-1. He then goes on to say, Spurs were down to nine men and the centre of their defence was made up of Eric Dyer and pierre Emil Hoiberg. That's one centre-back who hadn't played a minute all season and isn't known for his pace alongside a reserve defensive midfielder playing out of position. By this point, Tottenham had two players sent off and lost their two stars, Mickey van der Ven and James Madison to injury. It then goes on to say, but Postacoglu didn't do the typical thing in this scenario of instructing his team to dig in and drop deep and try to snatch a draw. Instead of doubling down and asking Hoiberg and Dyer to push up to the halfway line to try and squeeze the space, standing roughly in the halfway line um, with five of Spurs defenders. Um, sorry, five Spurs. It was kind of like a the formation kind of went to a one seven one. It, it was very bizarre at times. In the 68 minute, Chelsea fi finally worked out how to spring the trap, despite having four players in an offside position. Marco Correa timed his run well from a deeper position and had a shot saved. The freeze frame of Tottenham's defensive line feels symbolic of Postacoglu's Spurs and his principles more generally. Front-footed, bold and unconventional. Now, this is the screenshot um, that's in the report. Now, as you can see, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, but Kugaraya is running on the left-hand side, just over Poro's shoulder. And I don't know if Poro has actually fully seen him yet. Reese James plays the ball, and you've got Mudrick, you've got Jackson, you've got Sterling, and you've got Cole Palmer off. Dyer is the one that I believe is the deepest out of those other than Poro. And you've got Son. That's what I'm talking about in terms of the 1-7 formation. Now, this nearly worked in certain points of the game. We had chances. Dyer put it in the back of the net, but unfortunately... It was offside. Son also had a shot on goal. Um, but was Postacoglu right to carry on playing his style, to carry on fighting? Um, now, Postacoglu has been a manager for 30-odd years. He's a very, very experienced coach. He's, he's won trophies in Australia. He's won trophies in Scotland. He's won trophies in Japan. He's managed a national team. You can't teach an old dog, new tricks. And what I mean by that is Postacoglu is not going to change his footballing style and the way he wants the players to play, regardless of the personnel on the pitch. He come out and said, even if there was five players on the pitch, we're going to have a go, mate. That's what he said. The report then says, just after that chance, Postacoglu called Dyer over and reiterated the message that he and Hoiberg should keep pushing up to the halfway line. It's just, and this is what Postacoglu goes on to say. It's just who we are, mate. Postacoglu explained after the game, as long as I'm here, that's what we're going to do. Even with five men, we will have a go. Now, the Connors on this guy, the, the chest on this guy, to carry on playing that way with nine men, you have to respect it. Whether you think it's right or wrong, you have to respect it. When Jurgen Klopp went down to nine, when we played Liverpool at home, he shut up shot. The difference between Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool and the team we had was 
At the time, Liverpool had Canate, Matip, Van Dijk on the pitch with Robertson and Trent. Five good defenders. We had Porro, a DM playing centre-back in Hoiberg. Eric Dyer, who's not played a minute, right, in of Premier League football all season. And our right-back, backup right-back, playing left-back. So the argument is, even if we went to a low block, how, how long is that low block actually going to keep Chelsea out for? Could we have potentially gotten a point? Maybe. Could we have potentially won, the, the got a point, scoring if Dyer's onside or Son puts a chance away? Maybe. Benson Cole misses a header from three yards out. It's so such fine marginal. The one thing I will say is I don't think Chelsea are all that. Yes, they're in transition, but they're not all that. No, no way are, are they all that. No way. They're not. They're not that good. Jackson had seven or eight chances. You know. Here we are. It then goes on to say eventually Chelsea worked out how to expose Spurs' high line and ran in three late goals to seal a four-one win. Through the game settling in the third minute, the ninety uh, for settling third in the ninety-fourth minute um, came just after Son Heung-min had nearly equalised. Dyer had a goal ruled out for a tough offside. And Rodrigo Benton Court failed to turn in across from close range from a team with nine men. Spurs were remarkably in the game, even deep into stoppage time. It then goes on to say, how do we assess an extraordinary match, encouraging proof of Postcoglu's commitment to his principles of evidence of his and his team's limitation? Well, then this is where this is the interesting part of the report. Well, first of all, Spurs were likely to lose the game. However, they had the approach that if we if we went there, uh, down to nine men uh, with the score at 1-1, only 55 minutes played. And given those circumstances, there are lots of positives. And I do agree there are lots of positives. Before we get into the report, the belief to carry on playing the way Postacoglu wants, the trust in Postacoglu that this is the best way to play and not downing tools. Three, the heart. And, and they, they every player played their heart out, right? Four, Every player is on side and playing for the badge. There's not a single player that doesn't agree with the way we're playing. Five, Vicario is the real deal. This guy, save after save after save, the sweeper role. He come out and made five sweeping clearances. My goalkeeper did really, really well. Unfortunately, he just conceded four, four goals. For a start, Postacoglu has shown to his players that he believes wholeheartedly in what he is preaching to the team. At Brisbane Raw and Celtic, there were equivalent early games that were disastrously, but were subsequently, cityed uh, and being crucial in both teams. Now, that the the games were um, at Raw, it was a 3-0 defeat to Melbourne victory in September 2020, 2010. And then Celtic was a 4-0 defeat to Bayer Leverkusen at home. A few months after the Australian had taken over, both of those games were held up as evidence of Postacoglu's naive, naive, naivety and stubbornness. Both of those seasons finished with Postacoglu's side winning the title. Now, Charlie Eccleshare is not saying that we're going to win the title, but it's still relevant that that one result does not change anything. Um, he has spoken previously about how it's uh, how in the tough moments that you learn most about yourself and your team. And I agree with that as well. Monday night may end up having a, simi a similarly uh, effect. The mood in the Spurs dressing room after the game was one of a defiance and in pride continues to play their way. Every player is on board. We just need to get better depth and do everything we can to win silverware. The reaction of the crowd was similar. I was there, me, Nick, Phil P., the atmosphere in the stadium was unbelievable. Even when we were 3-1 down, still cheering on the players. The players are still fighting, still fighting. 4-1 down. You know, Son put his hands on his knees at the end. Absolutely knackered. We were knackered. Gave everything. Played with nine men for 35 minutes. Played with 10 men for... 45 minutes. There was there was so much added time on. I think there was eight minutes in the second half and 12 minutes in the first half. 
So you're talking close to a two-hour game. Unbelievable. Despite the scoreline, score it was another night that strengthened the bond between the players and the fans, as well as the players and the manager and the fans and the manager. And it uh, and then that matters, maintaining momentum of Postacoglu's excellent start. Spurs can take a lot from what happened after 55 minutes, but they also need to reflect on how they put themselves in such a hopeless position. And this is very important, what he says. Your doggy and Christian Romero could have been sent off for a straight red card in the first 22 minutes. And the... Uh, sorry, and even the uh, normally calm Postacoglu was booked in the first half for stepping outside his technical area to express his frustration. Following the early reprieve, Romero was sent off soon after the foul on Enzo Fernandez, while your doggy took a needlessly risk in picking up his second yellow. Um, look, when, when, Romero shouldn't be like, oh, I've been very critical on this guy, and I'm still going to be very critical on this guy. You cannot do that in the penalty area. You can't do that. It was a red card. It deserved to be a red card. And that's that. Like, that's that. It deserved to be a red card. 1,000%. Your doggy, second yellow, 100% of second yellow. Your doggy put his hands on his head and he knew immediately that he was going to get sent off. A few other VAR decisions didn't go our way. Potentially, Reshame should have been sent off. Um, you know, it is what it is. The result is deflating and could be uh, and could have a serious long term consequences depending on the severity of Madison and Van der Ven injuries. But Spurs' performance also served to strengthen the clarity of Boss Cogley's message. Nothing will divert him, divert him from playing the way he believes to achieve sustainable success within the team. In other words. It's just who we are, mate. So the question is after that report, big up to Charlie Eccleshire, by the way. The question is after that report, was he right? Was Postacoglu right to play his way? Now, my argument is, I'm going to try and give both sides of the argument and then I'm going to give my opinion at the end. So the argument is, if we have put our, our defensive line 40 to 30 yards deeper, we wouldn't have conceded those chances because Chelsea would not have put the ball over the top and had the space in behind for Mudrick, for Jackson, for Sterling, for Gallagher, for Kukurea to run in behind. And we may have got a point. Liverpool managed to do it. But Liverpool had Van Dijk, Matip, Canate, Gravenberch, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Endo and Robertson on the pitch. The other argument is the other argument, the switchy of the argument is post Coglu, we created chances. Benson Cole missed the header in the uh, right the, when it was, I think it was 2 2 um, or 2 1. Sorry. Dyer's goal was fractionally offside. An unbelievable finish, by the way, from Eric Dyer. And Son had a chance at goal. So we did create chances even with nine men. A lot more chances than Liverpool managed to create because Liverpool shut up shop when we played them with nine men. Was he right? I'm 60% 40, 60% he was right, 40% no. There is a part of me that still thinks he should have potentially shut up shop and play for the point. But the majority of me thinks he, he was right. Like I said, Postacoglu is not going to change his philosophy of football the way he wants to play. It doesn't matter who he's got on the pitch. It doesn't matter if it's Vendor Vendor Romero or Dyron Davis or Phillips and Davis or Phillips and Royale. It does not matter who he has on the pitch. He's got his identity and his way of playing and his ethos, his playing style, and he will stick to that. And I quite, I think that's ballsy. Very, very ballsy to do. But I think he's the right guy for the job. I think 100% he's the right guy for the job. He signed a four-year contract. We brought in a new director of football. We brought in Scott Mum. We brought in Langer. We brought in a new, new head scout. Right? We could be in for a tough, a tough few months. A couple of months. No Romero or Van der Ven for Villa. Wolves 
and City. Potentially no Van der Ven for six to eight weeks. No one really knows the severity of the injury. So this January transfer window is going to be massive. If a worse comes to worse situation where Van der Ven is out for quite a long time, we're going to have to we have to go in and get a centre back. And I and I am I'm very open to us to seeing us bring in Tosin Adarabaya. I think that would be a a good buy. Um, free transfer in the, in the summer as well. So you could pick him up for 12, 15 million quid. Maybe even bring in him and Lloyd Kelly if Van der Ven's got a long-term injury. Because we just bring in Tosin and Rebaio, one injury to him, and it's curtains. Um, the forward line as well. Lots of positives from Brennan Johnson. Unlucky for him, he was hooked off. But he'll start against Wolves, and I expect him to do big things. I think he's. I think there's a there's a player in there. He was he was causing Reese James a lots of problems, lots of problems. Um, some of the some of the points worth noting is Romero's got to take this rashness out of him. He's been recorded four times now since he joined the Premier League. Once against Vitesse, once against Man City, once against Chelsea, and once against um, I can't remember who the other one was, but it's definitely four red cards. He's been recorded more than any player in the Premier League since he joined there. He has got to cut that out of his game. Van der Ven, absolute class, just unlucky that he picked up a knock. It's incredibly unlucky. Um, done his hamstring. Sonny, as well. So vocal yesterday, I thought, in certain parts. Could have done more in other parts as well, though. He could have... Could have Grabbed the players and said, "Look, we need. We've got. We've got to calm this down. We're still in this game, even with ten men. Your doggy's twenty years old. Serious player in there, but you've got to brush. You've got to get rid of that diving in now. Um, lots of positives to take. The amount of ground that Bisuma, Saar, Hoiberg covered. The amount of ground that Poro covered. There's lots of positives to take. Um, there really is." And I and I think I still think we all can go out and beat Wolves. When you look at our next four games we've got coming up, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Wolves, Villa, City. We are going to be without Romero after a straight red, and no Van der Ven potentially for these for these for at least a month. Which means he's gonna look. He's gonna lose. He's gonna miss Wolves, Villa, City, West Ham, Newcastle, Forest, Everton, Brighton, Bournemouth, Man United, and Brentford. It's a tough run of fixtures. It's an incredibly tough run of fixtures we've got coming up with the injuries we've got. If we had a fully fit squad, then I'd fancy us to win a lot of those games. Um. Yeah, like I said, it's a longer video than usual. We've just got to, you know, stay positive, even though I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm normally one of the negative ones. I'm normally one of the, if you can't see what Levy's doing, F off down the Emirates, I'm normally one of those guys. But, you know, I'm sitting here right now and I'm thinking, we've, definitely, we've, got, we've got the right guy. We just need to, he needs to iron out some of the problems in the squad. Um, look, make sure you smash a like on the video if you haven't already. We've got another video coming out later today about Emil Hoiberg, which I can't believe. I can't believe that, what I'm about to record after this. Make sure, if you haven't already, you have subscribed to the channel. 350 subs away from 18K. Every single one of you, hope you're all doing well. And, um, and yeah, it's going to be going to be a difficult couple of months, you know, potentially with all these injuries. Um, but we'll have to stick in. And what will be, will be, guys. I'm out.